I was depressed. I was broke. I was going for a mentally challenging time. And I swear to God, after God, the only person that helped me get through that was Swaggy C, bro. So yeah, man, that means a lot to me, bro. You helped me change my life, man. Welcome everyone to the Words of Wisdom podcast, the number one podcast in the trading space, the fastest growing, and that's thanks to every single one of you for supporting. At this point, we have hit 100,000 subscribers. Big time. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I appreciate both of you being here. And you've already now seen who we have for this very special episode. We have to pull out all the stops from the guest to the set. We are joined by the one, the only Mr. Swaggy C, and the one, the only... Yurimi as let's well. Go, let's go, let's go. And this is a special episode because if you actually go back in time to Yurimi's episode, he mentioned alongside, along his journey, sorry, that he was inspired by and looked up to Mr. Swaggy C here. And they actually ended up making some content around that, talking about that. And now we're here, finally, in Dubai. One's come all the way from Thailand. One's come all the way over <laughs> from the US of A. And we're here now. I'm going to throw it straight to them. So Yurimi, what's it, and what's it like now, obviously, after going through your journey to be here? With Swaggy. Uh, yeah, man. First and foremost, I want to say thank you for having me on this podcast again, bro. And Swaggy, thank you very much for allowing me to share the stage. A lot of guys will think they're, Sorry. even though you're big time, but a lot of guys will be like, I'm too big time to step in, step in the field of a, with someone who, look, who looks up to me, you know. But um, yeah, first and foremost, got to give my thanks. And secondly, yeah, man, it feels amazing. Um, Swaggy, someone who, pff, bro, maybe not even. Swaggy, someone who's changed my life. And I said to you in the podcast, bro, uh, when I see you in person, I'm going to give you your flowers, etc. And yeah, man, it feels amazing to be on the other side now. Um, very, very, very long way away from where I want to be with the levels that Swaggy and the likes of the industry icons have set. The levels are up here. I'm on my way there. Um, but I feel like I've achieved a good enough of a level to, um, t uh, you know, with regards to what being successful is mm -hmm. um but when you're standing next to these guys you got a lot of work to do you mm -hmm. know so yeah it feels amazing coming from where i come from you guys know the story by now i've rinsed and repeated how many times minus six pounds in my bank account all i would do is watch your videos and obviously there was a lot of people that i would watch videos of like i was watching q banks raul etc but swaggy for me was like i said to you not only an inspiring mentor bro but I come from a crazy household. <laughs> yeah. I got a lot of siblings. Yeah, yeah. There's like running up and down the stairs. I can't focus, bro. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to chart. I'm trying to break down the markets. I, I physically can't do it because there's too much noise, you know? Mm -hmm. I love my family, love my brothers, love my sisters, but it's just an environment where I can't focus on trading, you know? So I had to inject, you know, personal development positivity into my ears every single day. So I put my AirPods on, put my headphones on, whatever it was, and I would listen to guys like Steve Harvey, I would listen to uh, uh, Stephen R. Covey, Jim Rohn, I would listen to Swaggy C, Eric Thomas, etc. I would listen to these kind of people because in a negative community that I was a part of, that was the only positive thing that I could hold on to. Mm -hmm. And the bridge between the gap was YouTube, social media. And for me, the reason why I big up Swaggy in the way I do is because it's not just trading that he helped me with. It's videos like vid that video you made with TJ Millionaire Mentor. Mm -hmm. things like that bro when I watched that video I was on my I was sleeping on the sofa bro I was sleeping Crazy, on bro. the sofa watching that video and I was thinking to myself this is the level that a person can attain in this life and I would have never have known about this of course there's movies music videos whatever but in terms of someone who actually makes a video in detailed breakdown uh, in a detailed fashion and to show you the kind of life you live you know that video was crazy bro and just speaking from a business acumen point of view the way you guys were going back and forth, just spreading so much gems, dropping yeah. value. For me, it was more than trading. So uh, off the back of that, I'm mad at my word. My guy. Told you I'm going to give you your flowers in Appreciate person. You, bro. So I got you the flowers, my boy. Oh, yeah, yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah, right. yeah, 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 uh, yeah. You got that? We're on the move, yeah. Come on, bro. <laughs> Take them, man. You got you to open this up, bro. So I got you another little gift. But open up this Come one. On first. On, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Couldn't get you the red one, bro, because we don't swing that way. But hey, I feel you. Man. I got you something a bit sentimental, my guy. It's uh, yeah, you'll see when you open it up anyway. That's it. It's a bit of a. Yeah, it's 
So this is a flower that never dies. Never dies. Well, it dies after five years. So they preserve the chemicals. And I got it in the Swag Academy colors. The original colors. Yeah, the original colors. You get it? I see it. Yeah? So that's that, bro. Like, I, I appreciate this. And this is something. I that love this box, too, because it's easy to carry yep. with me. Packaging. You can open that up as well, bro. Good. Yeah, man. I thought, what color should I get? I appreciate this. You know, you know, it's my color, no matter yeah. what. Come on, bro. Is this something I would actually want? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's something you want. There's a test now. That's yeah. it. Once you turn right. around, he goes, yo. Something I actually want. <laughs> it's a bit flamboyant, but hey, if that don't scream swag, swag, you see, I don't know what does. Check this. Let's see what's up with this. I'll put this right here for a second. I'm in suspense. I'm just yeah, right. <laughs> what is it? You're right, boy. He's in Dubai. I don't see it on him right now. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, you know what Problem it is. Problem with these So many packages. Bags, <laughs> yeah. They want to make it an experience. Yeah, you know? of course, bro. Such a big bag to <laughs> from that to that. Yeah, that's it, man. Ooh, these are tough, bro. Yep. When I saw these, I yeah, that's him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You see me coming? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Hey, that's I it. appreciate come on, these guys. My guy, my guy. My boy, come on, man. Anytime, bro. How we looking, bro? Shining. I appreciate least it. Least I can do, bro. Honestly, bro. I love least, these. least I can do, I my love guy, this. I don't got me no LV shades. Yeah, yeah. At all. Yeah, bro, man. Yeah, you're shining. Yeah, you're shining. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Appreciate it, man. My guy, my guy. But yeah, bro, no, this is this is man. this is the least I can do, bro. And obviously, I said to you when I see you in person, I'm gonna give you those flowers, my boy. I appreciate it, and man. And it's, it's it's deeper than just me giving you your flowers, bro. It's like, you know, we know the industry we're in. We briefly spoke about this earlier. It's like people are ashamed mm. to say, "This guy changed my life. I learned from this guy." Um, you know, I've witnessed that firsthand. You know, people have learned from myself, and then they go on. You can. Bro, I'm, at the end of the day, we're not here to be fathers to people. We're just here to educate. Go off, do your own thing, no problem. It's about the fashion that you go off and do it. And, you know, you can't Absolutely. attain knowledge from someone and claim that this was a revelation that fell upon you, you know? This person taught you. and <laughs> Bro, it's facts, though. People, yeah, <laughs> people be learning from you. A whole camp, a whole course, and then they act as if, you know, the knowledge fell upon them. So I'm never going to be that guy, bro. I appreciate it, man. And this episode, I'm sorry if I keep going in, but... This is going to be just me really giving you your flowers, my bro, because you don't understand, bro. I was depressed. Mm. I was broke. I was going for a mentally challenging time. And I swear to God, after God, the only person that helped me get through that was Swaggy C, bro. So, yeah, man, that it means a lot to me, bro. You helped me change my life, my I guy, appreciate man. that, man. That's, uh, that's big time. I feel like with, with me and myself and my own content and where I come from, it's like I don't see stuff like this often. You know what I mean? Like, first of all, I appreciate you actually give me my flowers. It's like, people have told me for, for years, I've changed their life on social media. This is my first time actually getting flowers in person, besides from seeing people in the airport and they mm -hmm. say it, but like actually sitting down, talking to somebody and them, like you said, actually admitting it. Because like you said, people will watch your content, study you and, and grow from you. And then when they get there, they act like they, they learned on their own and they never had a mentor. And like, it's like a slap in the face to say, oh, I never had a mentor. Mm -hmm. Like, like it's, it's some far-fetched thing. We all learn from somebody, we all came from somewhere. Um, so I definitely uh, appreciate that. And when you mentioned the, the TJ Millionaire Mentor video, I just feel like when I'm creating content, like I know somebody out there is watching and benefiting. Mm -hmm. So if you go through my entire channel, you know, I may have, I don't know how many videos I have right now, but there's a specific purpose to each video, mm -hmm. right? I, I feel like a lot of people get stuck in, in one area or other areas that don't really know or they, they try to force a certain topic. And I think with me, um, me and Connor right now sit down, you know, before every video comes out. It's like, what is the intention? What do we want to get out? And that's why you see me go from a Secure the Swag, which is a TV show in my life, to uh, a day in a life, to uh, how I made this much money, to uh, how to trade like this. We have four different, maybe even more actually, but around four to seven different sections we kind of go back and forth because... Giving the guys a blueprint, bro. Yes. Yeah, so, they're going to they're copy you again. I'm, bro, that's a whole nother topic that yeah. I, I already... <laughs> yeah, I know. Um... But I feel like there's somebody who's going to benefit from mm. something because it's somebody who's, who's studying trading who may have already made it in trading for those two years who if I come out with a trading video, they may not care no more about that because they, they got it on their own now. But if I come out with a little bit of a lifestyle or secure the swag, it may help them be a better family man, a better father, a better husband in their own life. So they'll watch me for that kind. So I, gotta, I still got to keep that on the channel. Mm -hmm. And then I still got to keep the trading for those who haven't made it yet. So that's why like I, 
I try to impact people's lives in, in all different areas because, and I still do different content. Mm-hmm. You won't see me come out with trading content every single day for the next two years because some people who, who may have surpassed that already. Mm-hmm. And, it's, and, it's, and you don't want to keep getting new, new like clients and new people and try to reach a whole new audience. You just got to make sure you nurture the audience you have. So mm-hmm. I appreciate you uh, for, for, for being here and for growing. And it's also surreal uh, to me as well to see that, you know, somebody who had, like you said, negative six pounds in your bank account to actually being where you are today, to being successful, to people come up to you and ask for pictures to you, you know, because it's like, I don't know what I did, right? I just yeah. showed my life, showed, showed yeah. what's possible. And then it's, it's really a testament more so to you than, than, than me, per se. You know, I can, I can come out and show what's going on every single day if I want to, but there's, two, there's people on opposite sides of the spectrum. There's people who will watch the content, buy the course, watch the YouTube videos and say, Swag, you're doing something wrong because I'm not getting it. And there's some people who will do all that same thing, but then figure it out on your own and grasp it and be like, oh, Swaggy motivated me. You know what I mean? But like, it still takes you to, to get the job done, no matter yep. what. No matter what, what videos I come out with, it still takes an individual to get the job done. That's you want to know what's crazy, bro? I've never bought Swaggy's course. Mm. I bought it from my sister. I reached a crazy level just from his free YouTube videos. Mm. That's crazy. And please, please deep that, bro. Crazy like, bro, I'd be, I'd be charting up and analyzing, for example, GPUSD back in the days or US30, whatever yeah. it may be, yeah? Bro, I'm using the concepts that uh, we don't trade the same anymore. Of course. But, bro, d- I can trade the way you trade and still make money right now based off those, that crazy lockdown 2020 run. No one had a run like that, bro. <laughs> no, one had, no one had a run like that 2020 run. So, and it got to a level where when I was trading what he was teaching on YouTube, bro, I'm hearing Swaggy's voice in my head. <laughs> Why are you entering from here? Jordan Fibonacci from the swing high to the swing low, 0.68 to the 27 extension, TP right there. No, it's going to go to the 61.8 or 27. I'm taking profit. It's, bro, these are things that till this day I apply, you know, Fibonacci in, in, in a certain regards. Like, and when I say Swaggy was a mentor to me, bro, it's, it's deeper because it was kind of psychotic at one point because I would hear your voice in my head <laughs> when I'm about to take a dead trade. This trade has no confluences and I'm hearing Swaggy say, bro, what the hell are you doing? I used to talk dirty in my YouTube videos. Yes. <laughs> if you go back to my 2020 videos. That's how I, I learned. Talk dirty. Yeah, yeah, it's mad. He um, used to grill guys, bro. Yeah, no, there, there, it was a point to all of that because I, f- I felt like that's the reason, I guess, why um, I guess like my channel or me like resonated with the audience so much because I was different. Yes. You, know, you have everybody who came out before me from 2012 to mm-hmm. 2019 and I felt like they were more or less the same per se. Um, not a lot of energy, not a lot of charisma, but they knew what they were doing, knew how to make money, knew how to like, show the charts, but they didn't know how to resonate with somebody who was in the hood or down bad. You know what I mean? Um, so me talking crazy, wearing a do-rag. That's exactly what I was going to say. You know there know was mean? no guy speaking about Forex with a do-rag on. <laughs> That's a fact, bro. <laughs> and the purple do-rag was the, yeah? That's whenever right. whenever you saw the purple do-rag, it's, 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 it's business. Time. So, yeah, and yeah, no, I really appreciate you, you having us here, bro. No, it's my pleasure, man. And I want to ask you a question, actually, in regards to that, because I know over the years, no doubt, you know, from your position and everything that you've done, you've had people who have tried to, you know, either partner up with you or just generally be around you or try and tear you down just because of your success. But then to have the opposite now, I'm sure it doesn't happen very often. Obviously, yeah. you get the, like you said, you get the people with the comments, you get people who may bump into you. Yeah. But then to actually sit down and see a representation of your hard work, if you will, uh, because we don't really get that feedback a lot of the time, like or especially in your position, yeah, all yeah. of our positions, you don't really get that concrete proof and, and example of why you put in all this hard work. So then to see that, how does that sort of make you feel after all these years? And then obviously, what does that mean maybe moving forward, obviously, as you go, you know, continue yeah. to do what you're doing? The skilled challenge is finally here. Enjoy the lowest profit targets in the industry through our skilled challenge, which is only requiring a 6% profit target. Yes, you heard that right. Not only that, but enjoy 85% profit split as well as a 125% challenge free refund. All part of the best product on the market. You get to choose your drawdown between 8 or 10% for our toggle option. So you choose how much drawdown you'd like. Take advantage of the skilled challenge today. Yeah, no, it makes me want to continue more. You know, like there's some times where I'll be like, yo, I didn't gave the game nine years of trading but in terms of like social media and content and teaching it's four years now and it's like i feel like i can be i can be good now and be a family man and be just with my wife and my daughter and stuff and then it's like like i said people like you who've ascended and it's like there's like millions more people like you right now who don't even know anything about trading who may stumble across my channel like 
next year and then all of a sudden I'm done and I don't I don't do this no more. Mm-hmm. You know, like I, I closed my, my course down last October and I was like, I'm not I'm not teaching. I'm just everything's on YouTube for free. And in doing so, like my channel doubled from October to now to the point to where all of them were watching my old videos and they were demanding me to reopen the course because I closed it for the last 11, 12 months. You know what I mean? And then I reopened it for five days and acts kind of, we had the, the, the craziest launch or the second craziest launch we've ever had in the five day span because of, you know, people c- finding your channel later. So the future is like, it's hard for me to stop because there's many more people like you out there or even like myself from years ago who don't even know anything about trading, who may stumble across us next year. And it's up to us to uh, push that forward. And, even saying that, it's crazy to be on the opposite side because in my entire journey of being here, let's be real. Every single person in this industry studies my channel and watches my channel and sees what I try to come up with. Facts. And 99.9% of people will try to copy it, mm-hmm. emulate it without even giving me the credit. Mm-hmm. And, and it, it's hilarious because it's like, you guys can watch my channel as long as you want. Nobody can. I was talking to Umar this, uh, about this as well. Um, I, was, I was at a lunch today with Umar uh, and uh, Roy. And he was like, and we pulled up one of my videos that haven't even been released yet. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, he was like, bro, like your editor is like insane because it's like, how do you even come up with something? I, I can pay somebody like, I don't know, six figures right now. They still won't be able to come up with this type of stuff. Like, how does that work? And I say like, you have to find one, you got to find somebody who's like super, super dedicated. But at the same time, you got to be on the same wavelength. And if you can't match what I'm trying to, to create vision wise, because mm-hmm. it's not just about the. The, the, the graphics and the dramatics. It's about creating a story that's going to resonate with the next you in this world to where you can watch it and not get bored. Yep. Like that, that's Substance. Yeah, th- that's the, the, the whole part of this whole thing. Like, how can somebody watch my channel for 20 minutes straight mm-hmm. without getting bored, with, without feeling like, oh, they just wasted their time and they feel like they got a whole new, like, rejuvenation on, on, on life and stuff. Um, so that's why it feels crazy being on the opposite side because people, like I said, my, from my experience, People will try to copy, come out with the next style of secure the swag. And like, no matter, I can say this to the camera, no matter what you guys do, you guys will never be able to emulate what Connor is doing with, with my channel and how I'm talking on my channel. And it's better to at least, like you, you're doing something completely different than nobody's seen. You're doing a whole podcast and you're consistent and you're, you're bringing people together. Mm-hmm. And that's what I, I think people should do. Be different. Do mm-hmm. something different because you're going to stand out a lot more. Mm-hmm. Now you, you're, like you said, the number one podcast in the world. You're getting Rolexes from Umar. It's, it's a whole <laughs> different vibe. Like, you know what I mean? Hey. So, I, I don't know, man. I just feel like uh, it, it's, it feels good to, like I said, be on the opposite side for, for once instead of people on the other side. Just off the back of that as well, I feel like you highlight a very, very important topic. A lot of people don't realize you can copy someone or attempt to copy mm-hmm. for as long as you want. Even with your situation, bro, I see in that run, I see like so many people co- copying your thumbnails and stuff. But what you don't realize is you are, sometimes you, you are the product. Mm-hmm. If people don't relate with you, people can't relate to what you're talking about. If people can't find something to resonate with you on. You can try and copy the same method. I can be on YouTube and copy Mr. Beast and enti- his entire That's method. That's mm-hmm. a fact. They won't resonate with me because I'm, I, Mr. Beast is the product now. If someone tries to copy, the people that try and copy him, they will never attain the same sort of level. It's because it's Mr. Beast. Mm-hmm. The same way it's because it's Riz mm-hmm. on the podcast level. It's because it's Swaggy, you know? So yeah, you are the product and That's people it. just don't seem to understand that. And also wanted to mention as well, um, a lot of people might think it's just me. It's not just me. It's my little brother as well. So my little brother was 15 years old. So me and my brother started watching Swaggy at the same time. My little brother was 15 years old. I swear to God, I, I, I've got a screenshot of the profit he was in. He's in school. He's up like 700 pounds. And his teacher's telling him, why are you trading? Big my little brother's very humble. He's not like me. He's, yeah. a, he's an introvert. He doesn't speak. Like he's very quiet, but he's about his business, you know? So he just got like a 20, he was up 21K the other week as well, like on his, and he's very young. So he was in school in a maths class. His phone was about to get confiscated. He's up 700 pounds from a setup that, you know, Swaggy taught how to enter. So yeah, that's why I've got so much love for you, bro, because you've impacted my family as well, you know? And after that, seeing my little brother, I said, if this man's giving out that much free value on YouTube, (laughs) bro, I I brought the course for my sister. (laughs) I ain't been through the course. Oh I couldn't God. tell you what the course looks like. Mm-hmm. I just know it's purple. The website is purple at the time anyway. But, yeah, 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 you know, yeah. so yeah, bro, thank you for that as well. You've impacted Appreciate my little brother's life a lot, man. Yeah, man. I and, got bro, the, the, the secure the swags, oh, I think yeah. you, I don't think you realize what that does. Because mm. there'll be times I blow accounts. I watch that video and my trading gets better. Or I just feel a new sense of inspiration 
like I find my purpose again. Because you have to, you have to understand, bro, especially in America, imagine how many people that live in the projects are watching what you're doing, bro. That secure the swag for me was basically a weekly catch up with my mentor mm. to tell me, look, this is the life you can live. Not just lifestyle, bro. Just gems. You know, I, I, I saw Wakar speaking about, on it, speaking about you on his story yesterday, just saying how from a business acumen point of view, mm -hmm. you're an individual who knows what he's talking about, bro. And obviously, I'll say that to you in person as well. So I was gaining a lot more knowledge, not just about trading, bro, just about life. Like you said, your, your aim now is to show someone how to be as a family man, how to better yourself in all realms of your life. So for me, watching, the, bro, those secure the swags, what it would do for me, bro. Like, it's just an injection of me. I'm ready to go. That was my shit legit. Yeah? I got, uh, it's crazy, because it's like, I haven't even done security for like, how long? A year, probably? Yeah. Bro, I used to get annoyed. <laughs> Whenever I never, bro, I, bro. I get annoyed, bro. <laughs> bro, I swear to God, I used to get annoyed. Because there'll be sometimes you say, it's coming out. It's coming out. <laughs> I'm like, bro, where is it, bro? Where is it? Bro, uh, I swear, I swear sometimes we're perfectionists where it's like, okay, we can't do it this way. This is not going to work. And th that's that's one of my biggest downfalls is that if it's not great or, or close to perfect, it's not coming out. Mm. Um, luckily, we got we got it coming out three weeks, right? Three, four weeks. Like season four is coming out. But um, no, no, I just felt it was something that wasn't done in the industry. You know, like a, a actual, come, I came from TV. So an actual TV show, but on trading, but also like not just on trading because there's a lot of people out there who are good traders who are terrible human beings. Yes. Like me and you can talk about somebody right now. We both know who, who I'm talking about in my mind right now who is a, maybe a good trader, but not the best human being. It's like I'm trying to make sure people are all around to where they, they can walk out and, and people see a light in them and they want to get involved in trading as opposed to people thinking, oh, trading is full of people who just talk crazy, do X, Y, Z, and mm -hmm. they know how to make a few dollars behind the screen. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So. Yep. Um, no, that that's that's the whole the whole point and, and the value behind it, and and I appreciate people for yeah. actually loving it and, and gravitating towards. Yeah, bro, don't stop that, man. That does a lot for people, bro. So I just want to tell you personally, please don't stop that, bro. Till till this day. Yeah, nah. I'm yeah, yeah. Stop it. I got, nah, I got a lot in the future. You know, I got next year. I got like I think three or four big projects that's coming out that I don't think people are gonna are really gonna expect that I've been working on. Believe it or not, for the last two and a half years, like and they're, they're coming out next year, which is the main reason why I closed like my courses and everything that I've done in the past because, mm -hmm. like, I feel like. Even though those did, they were wildly successful, they are minuscule to what I plan on coming out with. And I'm not even talking about prop firms, though. I'm talking about just other businesses that I feel like super, super passionate about, mm -hmm. that I feel like have the potential to have exits and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And But they're all like around trading in a sense. Yep. They're still going to impact people's lives. So mm -hmm. uh, I feel like if, if I impacted people's lives over the last four years, and I, and I feel like I could have done better, then I feel like the next four is going to be even Bro, better. I'm telling you, my honest truth to you is from an outside looking in, obviously I don't know what's going on in your personal life at the time or whatever. But for me, I feel like that run that you had, as in, it's still longevity, you're still here, bro. Some guys, they'd have a run, they fall off, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're still here. But I feel from the outside looking in, I don't feel like people, enough people valued or enough people tapped in. Like there's such a big, not even a, a market, there's so many people right now till this day. If you go on your YouTube channel, there's so there's so many gems. There's some conversations, like I said, with TJ Millionaire Mentor. Yeah. There's bro, is this there's too much. A million, you know. Yeah, which is why, like I said, I'm glad it's on YouTube because YouTube's gonna live on for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Like these videos are not gonna get deleted whatsoever. Like they'll be there for two years, three years, far after me. Mm -hmm. Um, because I feel like, it, and that's why I keep posting because you can see the growth. Like you said, yeah. you can see me, uh, in in twenty like eighteen, twenty nineteen, like a one bedroom, mm -hmm. like showing me trading, and then you can see extremely like going from the one bedroom to the two bedroom to the three bedroom to the penthouse to the mansion to Puerto Rico, you know what I mean? And now something in Dubai, you know what I mean? So I like that growth and, and, and you know, the continuation uh, over and over again. But yeah, those videos aren't getting deleted, like ever. On on that, let me just get my phone. I've got something to show you about that topic. When you speak about um, the upgrade of like moving from the one bed to here, is that any other? This is, ab you would know, because this is abnormal for people living in the UK, like that come from the UK like us. But, um, let me give it some context real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, Whilst you pull that up, I was just going to say that it's very rare to see someone who can provide diverse content, right? Like you said, like lifestyle here, you know, a breakdown here, a talking head here, a podcast or interview here, uh, or full-on TV show like Secure the Swag and do well. Most people try the diversity because they don't know what they want. That's a fact. That's a While fact. you're doing it very calculated, it's for a reason and it works. And... The biggest thing, really, most people can't take a year plus out that <laughs> you did come and come back and then double their channel. 
Oh, which bro. Which is insane. And it, uh, like, to me, you know, I've, I've said it to you before, like when it comes to secure the swag, you said about people copying. I've said it to you before. I tried to emulate something similar. It just doesn't hit the same, right? There's something, even when I remember you did a, a podcast interview with someone, uh, one of your traders, right? Uh, recently, like a few weeks back or maybe a couple of months ago. And even the intro to that, I said to my guys, like, this is, <laughs> what is this? Really? Where, where you came into. Mm-hmm. Oh, 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 gotcha. You came into gotcha. the camera. Right, you can, you did an angle or a shot where it transitioned into the camera, then started the pod, and I was just like, I could never think of that. I could never think <laughs> of that. Him. That's him. That's not me. It's insane. You know but that's what, what. How much would you say, like, especially for me as well, like, how much would you say in terms of your team? Like, there's you, and yeah. everyone sees you. Yeah. Right. How how much would you say your emphasis is in the team as well and that synergy? Let's take a break for a minute there, guys, because I want to tell you about our other sponsor, Trade Zeller. Now, Trade Zeller is something I only wished I had during my journey because I would have saved myself so much time and more importantly, money. Because TradeZella is the greatest automated journaling software on the market. That's right, automated. All you have to do is connect your MetaTrader 4, MetaTrader 5, and it will pull up all of your data with all your statistics. It goes so in depth from obviously your losses, the days, the times. It allows you to bar replay so you can actually see that trade as if it was live. Absolutely incredible. It's an absolute game changer for everyone's trading journey. Without data, how can you make a statistical edge? I went through so much time without collecting data, without journaling. And why was that? Because most people find journaling very tedious when in reality, why not have it automated and all done for you? All you do is just add the notes. As part of TradeZeller, you also have playbooks. So if you have different entry drills, you can list them all out so you can categorize your trades. TradeZeller is for everyone, whether you trade options, whether you trade Forex, whether you trade prop firms, or even just your own personal account. It is here to revolutionize the trading journey. Make sure you click the link in the description below and use the code RIZ10 for 10% off. Go take a look at the link in the description. Let's get back to the episode. Yeah, you need to have it's it's big time. Uh, I was talking to, about this on a podcast two days ago, where it's like the the team is, is the biggest thing because even to this day, like out of all the the money I've made, let's, let's talk business for a second. Mm-hmm. Never spent a dime on paid ads. It's all from the the the, the storytelling and the media side, and not even just the media side. Like I have managers like Dom and Elijah who've been with me for three years right now, who are more protective over me than than I am myself. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like and and they only they, they care about the brand as much as they care about anything else like i don't i don't hire people who and it may sound selfish but i also pay heavy like i pay a lot of money to, to my to my team i don't hire people who's coming in like i'm in here for for seven hours i'm clocking in i'm clocking in that does not work for me like i don't i don't uh have people on the schedule i don't tell people what times to work they can work whenever they want but like if i'm texting you at three in the morning like I'm gonna I'm gonna text you. That doesn't mean wake up and do whatever. No, not at all. But I mean like I'm not gonna do the whole nine to five and after five and not hitting you up. No, we're doing Zoom meetings at 11, 11 o'clock because that helps overall. Because all of us and, and my companies are all hybrid companies. So prime example, like my managers, even though they're not creative directors, they will give advice on what they think should should work. So like when we did the the Cody podcast, like you said, we all I flew my entire team to L.A. and we we was there for I think a week or a week or two and we all just made videos, worked, came up with good ideas for the future and, and went from there. But yeah, no, the team is everything because uh, people think it's all just me. And m- believe it or not, like I come up with 99.99999% of ideas for the business, like in terms of what we should do next. Mm-hmm. Um, but my managers will structure it better. Connor will have the, 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 the visual better for it. Like prime example, and this is the last thing I'll say before, before you say that, before you show me that, yep. is that the whole Save Y2J thing I came up with when I was talking to myself um, from my former uh, prop firm, is that that was never supposed to be the case. Like that, that was, it was not supposed to come out like that. I'm telling you, like when I, when I say the original vision was literally me putting a camera on and just talking about the firm like everybody else did, that was the vision. And then I sat down with Connor and uh, another one of my uh, teammates, uh, House uh, Brandon, we sat there and talked about what we could do. And at the end of three hours, we had a whole script on, no, we're doing this instead, mm-hmm. you know? And, and that it wouldn't have happened if, if I wasn't in a room with the team just talking and bringing someone, like, what could be different? Mm-hmm. We literally put, like, I think we had, what, like, eight tabs open of, like, every single prop firm launch. We were like, okay, this sucks, this sucks, <laughs> this sucks. And we try to figure out what to do differently. Mm-hmm. So, you no, know, team is everything for me. Definitely. Most definitely. Man. Definitely. But, yeah, no, sorry, just to go back quickly, yeah, so... Um, when you, when you were speaking about moving to that one bed mm-hmm. and just upgrading and upgrading and upgrading, there was, I think, there was one... Uh, secure the swag video when you moved into the penthouse in LA. Yeah. So when you was you was talking about the kind of figures that you're paying monthly, I said, okay, this is this is 
this is mad. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. this is what. Okay, cool. Um, I believe obviously now that I've uh, I live in a penthouse, etc. There's there's levels to it, and obviously you, you reach a stage where you want to buy. Um, but when Swaggy, when you mentioned the kind of figures, I said, okay, this is possible. So what I did was I went to go and research. As I was actually minus 16 bank account uh, in my bank account, minus 16 pounds. So I was looking at different oh, homes. Snapchat. Yeah, this is ho- so this is like 20k a month penthouses, 30k a month, 20. The prices sound ridiculous. It doesn't make sense, but you gave me the perspective to know that that's possible. And literally, bro, that was at a time where, like, like I said, I had um, minus 16 pounds in my bank account, and you can see the very next. Um, this is one year, 2021, June 2022. I'm viewing different villas. Oh, like, that. I'm getting told Gabriel Jesus, who's a very crazy Arsenal player, is about to view this property. I'm going to view an, another penthouse that Jose Mourinho just moved out of. Mm-hmm. So, in the space of that year, year and a half, I was able to now look at those things and not even worry about the price tag. Like, I'm there. They're telling me, oh, can we see, like, a, a, um, a reference over the last two, three years? I said, I'll be honest with you, last two, three years, I was broke. I ain't got that. <laughs> yeah. I can give you six months rent up front. I can do that right now. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I'll, yeah. G- I'll give you six months rent up front. And that's the only reason why they took me on as a tenant because mm-hmm. I can pay them six months up oh, front. What landlord is going to say no to that, you know? Not at all. So yeah, um, just, just whilst, whilst we're here, just to get this out of the way, knock it out so we can move on to a different subject. Um, as you can see, bro, this is my little brother studying right here. Shows He's making a withdrawal of that. And you can see him right here. Look, very, very small lot sizes. So and it ended up with how much you see how much he ended up with for the month. Uh, shows at the bottoms coming anytime now. It's too many blues. I see it, right? <laughs> it's too many red. blues. <laughs> we had a very, very small account. Obviously, prop firms wasn't a thing for us back of then. Course, so of course, not. You just had to do your best to try. So he's up like 409. Um, that, w- that was back in the day. And this is me literally at work. I mean, I'm done with work. I left work. I'm just up on a crazy US 30 trade. Because at the time, I was making triple what I'd make in a month, mm-hmm. trading my own capital, you know? So yeah, bro, um, and this is the main one I want to show you. Look at this, November 2020, listen to this. This is, this is actually the main one I wanted to show you guys. Studying the market every single night. I watch my bro Swaggy, yeah. Help me out a lot, man, for real. But yeah, right now I'm a proper beginner. I haven't really started trading life properly yet, but I can guarantee you by the time you're watching this video, I'll show the date. You will see the date anyway. Um, I'll show you guys the date, but by the time you're watching this video, I've made dumb money. Trust me. <laughs> My God. Nah, I love that, bro. Yeah, man. That's crazy. Do you do you show like uh, the before and afters on your channel? So yeah, like? all the time. All the time? Good. Yeah. Maybe not, not YouTube. YouTube is one area I'm lacking in, but we're trying to work on that now. Good. That's an interesting thing I was going to ask you. Before I get there, I'm going to ask you this one just now because obviously you've shown us that video and we would have it on screen for everyone. Um, how does it feel, obviously, to actually go through that process, you know, where you are, you're documenting? Because a lot of people didn't get a chance probably to document before. Yeah. This We're in a new era where people have had that chance to document. Not many people have taken the yeah, chance. Absolutely. But you have. And so how does it feel then to go from that position where you've documented, you've said these things, and obviously we've talked about being in front of the people you're then watching then. Yep. Um, how does it feel then to uh, be on the other side of that? Actually have accomplished what you said? Because most yeah. people don't follow through with their words. Yeah. To be completely honest with you, I feel like in the most humble way possible, anything I put my mind to, I won't stop until I get it done. Mm-hmm. Like I see it as a failure if you just stop and give up halfway. Mm-hmm. I'm not that kind of guy. Never will be. I don't, I don't have it in me. So... To be honest with you, I always knew I'd be here. Like, when I used to watch you, I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll be in front of this guy one day. <laughs> so we're we're going to trophy out one day. Mm-hmm. Dinner with Jay-Z or dinner with Swaggy, I'm choosing dinner with Swaggy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Forget, no, but seriously, though, like, I always I always knew I'd be in this position, um, not just in the sense of sitting in front of people that are inspirations to me, mm-hmm. but in the sense of trading. It just made sense. Mm-hmm. Like, it just, because how I, st- I came across trading 2016, right? I didn't get into it because I thought you had to be a mathematician. I wasn't good at maths, science, English. Those were my subjects in school. I kind of brushed it. I avoided it. And then 2020, I was living with a bunch of friends. Um, one of them was very young. He was like 16, 17 at the time. I used to see this guy make minimum 40 to 100 grand a month in front of my eyes. I was living with him. So there was like six of us, right? Um, we was working on a pro- project together. And he was there as well. So... We started to take signals, mm-hmm. just helping us out mm-hmm. like, temporarily, took signals. I didn't have money at the time. All I had was 500 pounds to my name at that time. 
So I deposited it into uh, a, a live account. I was taking signals. Um, literally, bro, I went to sleep. I woke up. Within the space of four hours, I'm up like 400 pounds. Then it went up 700 pounds. And then within like two days, I saw like 1.5K. Obviously, like I said, back then, we didn't have access to capital. So it was like flipping. Mm -hmm. I, w I would never recommend that. Um, but that's all I could do back then with the kind of money that I had, you know? So that moment there just opened my eyes. Because I said, okay, this th it, it just clicked. You know when something clicks and you say, okay, this is the path I'm going to be on mm -hmm. for the next I don't know how long. It just made sense because I was, I said in the mo at that time, I said to myself, I placed, a f I, pl I placed a trade, clicked a few buttons on my screen, went to sleep, woke up, saw those type of blues. The reds came later. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I got wiped out. Mm -hmm. But that moment was enough for me to believe. Mm -hmm. And when people see the reds, they use it as an excuse to make them stop. Mm. But you don't understand that you are the problem. A lot of people say, oh, what pair moves the cleanest? Bro, your personality needs to get clean first. That's mm. a fact. You know what I mean? You need to move clean first mm. in all aspects of your life. So, yeah, man, that's when it clicked for me. And then after that, I came across a random video. Uh, and then I see Swag in the corner. I clicked it. <laughs> and from there. Because you basically translated it in a language that made sense to me. Mm -hmm. A lot of other guys were just trying to sound smart. Mm -hmm. Swaggy was delivering the message. Mm -hmm. In a way where you can understand it, bro. It's a guy with a do rack. I said, "Yeah, this guy's like me." <laughs> language, bro. <laughs> Let me click this. But yeah. yeah. What's it like for you? Is your mindset the same? As in, you always knew you it might not have been trading, but you always knew you would be in the position you are today. Yeah, absolutely. Like I, I still have notes, uh, like similar to him, and, and like screenshots of. For me, it was like voice memos. Like that was a big thing. Like um, I think my dad died in 2014, and after he died, I started doing voice memos, like on my old iPhones, and after I do the voice memos, I send it to my email, so I'd never lose them in case I, like, upgraded phones, got a new app ID, whatever, um, and I would say, like, okay, this just happened with a girl I'm with, or, or this just happened with yada, 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 like, one day I'm gonna be rich, I'm gonna remember all this type of stuff, and there's a lot of stuff I haven't even released yet in terms of me talking before and where I am now, but, no, I have notes on my phone of me saying, buy 25, I want these three things, I, I want to be I think on TV twice, I want to uh, make, I think, one or two million dollars, and then I want to be debt-free. And this is when I was, like, I think, 19. And then I did all that by 25, but I forgot that was even, like, a, a goal of mine until I was going through all my old notes just for a YouTube video. And mm -hmm. it was, like, created in, in 2015 or something like that, 2014, something like that. You know what I mean? Like, so that's, like, the date at the top yeah. of the notes and stuff. But, no, nah, I never had any doubt that I'd be here. I was talking to Q about this as well. Um but what I asked him was, like, do you ever sit back and, and are, like, appreciative that you actually got here? He says no. <laughs> like, like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. For me, I'm, I'm the opposite where it's, like, I knew I'd get here, but I'm I'm very, very, like, a nostalgic person where I will look back a lot and be like, yo, like, there's people from my high school, most of them, 98% of them who are still trying to figure out their lives today. And mm -hmm. I, I, I got to realize that they're the normal ones, yeah. right? Like, I'm not normal. I don't mean that in terms of I'm bigger. No, I mean, like, that's actually normal. People mm -hmm. look at my life and be like, um, and they try to emulate it, but they realize, like, it's kind of like an anomaly, per se. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it's not, I'm not saying it's not realistic. It's realistic. Like, you've done it, people have done it, but it's like, like, people feel like they're a failure because they're not where I am by 28 years old because I'm 28. And it's like, that's not, that's not realistic. Like, you, you still have so much time to figure out your life. Like, mm -hmm. it's realistic to do that when you're 35, 36, 37. You have time. Mm -hmm. Like, I could look at it and be like, oh, well, this person's 19, you know, and, and, and a TikTok, like, like, uh, Speed or, or Kai Sanat, whatever, and they, they're making 30 million. And then when I was 19, I was broke. Like, I'm not looking at it like that, you mm -hmm. know? Like, mm -hmm. so I feel like if, if a lot of people looked at m their life and realized their life is more normal and they have all the time in the world to, to get to where I am, as opposed to, all right, I'm 28, I haven't made a million dollars yet, I'm a failure, I, I can never do this, mm -hmm. they, they'd be a lot happier. Just set the expectations more realistic because you have time. Definitely. Would you say it's the actual, what a lot of people don't look at is they look at the end result, right? And they see you now and they see yeah. you now yeah. versus. As you say, it is an anomaly, but the anomaly doesn't isn't like there's not a, a picture perfect person not at all. or age or anything like that. Mm -mm. It does come down to what I would say is the work rate. Yeah, I right? like you know this month alone you've gone to I don't know eight different places, right? You're you're running the the tanks of energy dry, but you still decided to turn up here, for example, yeah. right? And I feel that that's the difference. Yeah, it is a difference because um, one of my favorite books is The Richest Man of Babylon. I forgot what chapter it is, like maybe five or six, but no, it's actually maybe two or three. And uh, they were all in the class with a, with a guy named Arkad, who was the richest man in Babylon, basically. Mm -hmm. And they were asking him, like, when we were kids, like, there wasn't one game you outshined us in. There wasn't one test you did better than us in. So why should, like, a single fickle fate, like, single you out to be 
richer than all of us. Mm-hmm. And he was like, if you, but like over the last 40, 50 years, if you had like, if you have a bare existence in, in terms of what you're doing right now, you're struggling to live, like that's nobody's fault but your own basically. Mm-hmm. And he's saying that they don't understand that he was, you know, carving clay tablets at night and, and, and asking people who were wiser than him, like, please just tell me how to get rich and, and I'll do this for you. I, like, you know what I mean? Things like that. Mm-hmm. And I feel like for me, in relation to me, it is the work rate. It's not a, a matter of luck or the anomaly just happened upon me. Like, I remember being, like you said, like you have all the videos of you just like studying. I remember being literally 18 and 19 and 20 years old and I, was, I played college basketball. Mm-hmm. And like, whether it's my teammates or whether it's, it's, it's people in my class, like I would see them go to parties mm-hmm. and, the, and even girls would ask me to all to come out and be like, nah, I'm trading right now. And they would call me boring. Like, literally I got called boring. Uh, girls didn't want to like really be around me because they'd want me to like, come party. And I'm like, nah, because like, I'd be the cool kid in class, like, you know, make, have a good time after practice, be in the cafeteria. But then when it came to like that 6 p.m. to midnight hour, I was not to be found. I was, you know, in my, in my, in my dorm. You know what I mean? I think I maybe went to like two events in my three years of, of, of college. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, and um, it's, it's because of that, the work rate. Like I, I, I remember um, not even just parties, like uh, um, whether it was events, whether it's uh, 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 outside endeavors, I've seen like people have like three something, four sums, and, and I'm like, okay, that that could be cool. But at the same time, it's like, no, I, as an 18 year old kid, it's like, no, like I I have to to focus on this right now because I feel like it's gonna land me to where I want to get to. And then I remember when I was 21 years old, when I finally, because you said like you said like you saw it going from 400 pounds to 700, 1,000. For me, it was, um, I told the story a lot, and I'll make it real quick. It was that. We played college basketball, and on March 6th, we lost in the first round to Fairfield, and we were supposed to win. It was an upset. Like, mm-hmm. we were supposed to win that game, the first round of playoffs. And when we lost that game, that same week, March 10th, was my first trading week where I had a year of experience of studying under my belt. Mm-hmm. And this is my first time ever where there's no, let's say, class from 8 to 2 p.m., and then there's no basketball from 2 to, like, 7, where it's like you got to go, go to film, then you got to uh, 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 play uh, practice. You got to practice for three hours. Go back and watch film. Then you got to go to the, the 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 training room and recover. Ice bath. Get wrapped up. Then go to the cafeteria. Get some food. Because D one basketball is no joke. It's not D three. It's not D two. Like they take it very very seriously. And this is my first week where that was all eradicated and, and mm-hmm. gone. And that week I made two thousand dollars in a single day. March tenth, two thousand sixteen. Never forget like, like 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 anything. And once that happened, I knew I was dropping out. I, I knew. And I think with me, go back to your question, is that I made decisions and took risks that other people are too scared to make. Mm-hmm. Right? People ask me all the time, well, you were a junior, about to be a senior. You had one year left. Why don't you just finish and then do what you wanted to do? Mm-hmm. That's a year of my life I would have wasted. Like, I knew what I wanted to do at that moment. So I finished out from March to May. Once that ended, I sent messages to my coaches and, and my friends saying, guys, I'm not coming back. I love y'all, but I'm about to go be the trader, yada, yada. I still have all the messages on my phone and people saying, LOL, good luck. That's not going to work, yada, yada. Um, leave me on red. And then years later, they, they circle back around. I always knew you could do it. Hey, I have the screenshot of you saying, no, I'm not. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But no, nah, it's, 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 it's the work rate and, and it's, the, it's the risk that you, know, you take. So yeah, I can be the anomaly, but the anomaly comes from the, the decisions that were made by a single individual. You know Definitely. What I mean? Definitely. What's it been like for yourself then as well? Because obviously I can imagine very similar in terms of anomaly. Was it the mindset? What was it for you? In what regard though? In regards to like reaching the levels that you've reached, you know, everyone can see like, oh, okay, yeah, you know, he's done big podcast numbers or he's a big trader now, but they don't see. Yeah, so my friends actually tell me this. Mm-hmm. People that I'm very good friends with till this day. Um, they didn't mean no harm. That's why they're still my friends. Mm-hmm. But they say um, there was a time, there's a place in London called Bagel King. Mm-hmm. I used to go there every night, grab a bagel, barbecue chicken, whatever. We're there at night anyways. And we're queuing up and my friends are looking, th- they're thinking what, what kind of cake should I get? What sandwich should I get? They're looking at me, they're tapping me, and I've zoned out. They're like, yo, what's wrong? I'm like, oh, sorry, I'm just, I'm, I'm just thinking. What are you thinking about? I'm making six figures next year. And they say to me, yeah, yeah, inshallah you will. They say, yeah, yeah, you will. He said yeah. inshallah. Yeah, inshallah you will. Mm-hmm. But till this day, they, uh, uh, and, and nowadays they tell me because they, they learn under me now. And mm-hmm. they came to, they was on stage at my live event and they, they narrated the story. It's on my page and they said, I didn't. I didn't believe it. Mm-hmm. And we were saying, yeah, we're, we're thinking, what cake are we gonna buy? What food are we gonna eat? And you're saying, I'm making six figures next year. As your boy, I didn't want to knock you down, but it's like I didn't believe it. I, th- so. I think the tricky part is that like it sucks because like they're not wrong per se, and the people in my life aren't wrong. They they've never seen it. Yes, they never seen somebody yes. like us make it. So like they have that. I can't blame anybody for being pessimistic, even though it upsets me. Like looking back at the screenshots, mm-hmm. it's like. If you, you got a 19-year-old college kid saying, I'm dropping out of college. I'm going to yeah. be this day trader. 
know what I mean? Like, like you said, or you're in Bagel King and your friend is like, oh, I'm going to make so much money. But, like, they don't got the money. They may not have the mindset. And it, it takes somebody like me and you to, like, show them it's possible. Yep. Because not now you may be influencing their, their lives in, in yep. the most, like, positive way. Mm-hmm. My mom and my dad are the most cultural. Mm. When I told them I'm dropping out of uni, <laughs> bro, oh. By the way, Asian moms are the same as, like, Yemeni moms. In terms of like ethnically, the cultures, the values yeah. with university. That's the big. If you drop you out of. Your mom Asian? No, my mom's Yemeni, so my uh, mom's Arab. Got you. If you drop out of uni, you are done. You're a disgrace to the family. <laughs> you are going to be. But the thing is, I kind of proved her right in the beginning because I told her, look, it's a process. I'm going to have to get a few jobs because I ended up mopping floors and cleaning toilets for five pounds an hour, 12 hour shifts, opening the shop, closing the shop, leaving home crazy early, everyone's asleep, coming back late at night, you know? So it's like I'm, I'm proving her wrong because there'll be times I'll have a good run, I blow my account, I have to go get a job again. So she's looking at me like, you're a joker type of thing, you know? Like, w- what's, what's going on? Then I got another video on my Snapchat, I'll just send it to you, it's long to pull it up. But I said to her, Mumsy, we're going to be rich. Mm-hmm. And I'm there, I'm charting, I'm analyzing the charts. Mm-hmm. So like, like you said, bro, I don't blame them because they don't know. There is no anomalies in my family. I yeah. told my family, I'm going to be the one to change the circumstances. Mm-hmm. Now my mum doesn't have to worry about money. She can she go whatever she, she... Bro, she, she's <laughs> happy, but still, she still like throws the uni joke. But I know she's not being serious yeah, because yeah, yeah. she didn't let my... My little brother doesn't go uni now. Okay, so that she, she's more open now. Yes, that would have never, ever, ever worked if... Not to say I paved the way for my little brother, but yo, big bro took a hit Absolutely. for you, you know what I mean? Absolutely. So yeah, like, I don't blame them. Even with my friends, only now my, the, the eyes are starting to open up. My, mm. my parents, the eyes are starting to open up because... Sometimes you've got to put your money where your mouth is, you know, mm-hmm. and show up when it's time to support your family, help them, Absolutely. show them what you're about, bro. Like y- your mom can't be struggling, your siblings can't be struggling, your, f- your family can't be struggling, and you're out here living the high life. It doesn't make sense, bro. Like Absolutely. I'm not going to sit here and speak about what I do for people, what I've done for my family, but put it this way, before I ever treated myself, my family were good. My first paycheck, the entire thing went to my family, bro. Mm-hmm. Like first and foremost, I've got to get everybody right. Then I get myself right after, mm-hmm. you know? So yeah, um, in terms of how it's been for me, I, I don't blame people other than the shameless ones. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. The ones yeah. like I said, this, I always knew he was going to do No, he didn't. No, he didn't. Stop no, he didn't. it right Stop now. It. Yeah. Stop it. How important would you say it was for you to have that sort of representation, you know, to be able to see someone like Swaggy, who, though obviously is in the States, in terms of the journey, was very similar, and be able to see someone, as you said, in terms of numbers earlier, yep. who's done it, doing it, it's, it's possible, it's real. How, was impo- how important was it for you it was to very important. see that? It was very important because some people have father figures in their life. Some people have mentors. But for me, Swaggy was a mentor and an older brother to me. And when I was watching him, I actually felt like we're very, 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 very similar as human beings. And I know it sounds mad creepy because <laughs> I've been watching him. <laughs> it happens often. Yeah, but you don't realize because yeah. people, people come up to me and say this. Mm-hmm. They, they come to me with loads of facts about my life I'm like bro you work for the feds like what's the <laughs> you know what I mean like it's, it's mad but you don't realise that when someone's been watching you for so long they're analysing your behaviour patterns they're analysing how you speak mm-hmm. they're picking up of, of the same lingo type of thing like even sometimes I'm on a zoom call and I'm breaking down a pair to my students I'm like look clear as day clear as day I got it from Swaggy <laughs> it's, 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 it's still stuck to my head like mm-hmm. from all those hours I've been putting in watching so yeah like bro it, it, it feels good you know um it means a lot to me that I was able to have someone like that come because I, I don't know about I don't know anything to do with trading um, prior to 2020 in terms of how it was on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't know if there was a person like Swaggy on there that people can relate to. I'm not sure in terms of the on th- the personality. I oh feel no, like never, people yeah. people are just making chart charting videos, right? I would say even to this day, personality wise. Yeah. Personality wise, I don't think anyone's. I don't think anyone can. Yeah. Like you said, like you can't really copy a personality. That's the problem. They can try and copy thumbnails, they can try and copy storylines or whatever it may be, but in terms of personality you can't emulate that. Yeah. Yeah, I think people think it's like a like a, a joke thing or I'm forcing it for the camera. That's how I am on the camera. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, off camera I'm kinda like a little like calm or a little bit I gotta save the energy for the camera. That's how I am like back home as well. But no, no, I've I've always been like you go go to my Snapchats and all my stuff from 17, 18, 19 years old, I was always like extra and loud and so I can see vlog current status, I'm here, you know, I was, I was always like that. So I think people see that and they've seen it work for me and they'd be like, okay, I want to do that. And it's like, no, just like, you, like I said earlier, like do what, what can stand you out and make mm-hmm. you different. I feel like people did that. They, they, they go uh, to higher heights. Um, but speaking on what you had, you had mentioned before, it's like, 
I, I feel like if people are more transparent and showing their life, it, it can motivate people out there in the world. Because you mentioned touring houses and seeing like those price numbers. Like for me, like I wanted to, to say the numbers on, on camera specifically, and it, it wasn't to flex. It was to say that this is possible. This is what I'm paying. Mm-hmm. And, and given the reasons why and giving people like a plan A and a plan B option, right? Like, of course, I, I believe, and this is my job, I was 24 years old at the time, 25 years old. Of course, I believe in like buying a house and stuff. But at the time, it was like I, I, I weighed out both options. Just like, okay, this penthouse is 25000 a month. This house that I want is, let's say, I don't know, $10 million, but the down payment is a $2 million check. Like, okay, it literally, 25 times uh, 4 is, is 100000 so 300000 for the year. So basically times 4 times. So basically, it, w- it would essentially take me about eight years of, of paying this penthouse off to get to that two million dollar down payment so i can pay this and during those eight years i'm gonna make eight figures and way more and beyond and beyond and then i'll do what i want mm-hmm. so that's how i justified paying that much money in, in rent because it's yeah. like people are like oh you want to you want to put that money in something you own first of all i'm not listening to nobody who doesn't who doesn't make as much money or close as much money as me people who, who never hit 100k in their life telling me what to do with my money tell me to buy a house you need to figure out what you want to do with your money stop telling me what to do with my money that's the first thing second thing is i agree with that like i agree <laughs> with the statement like you should own but like I w- I'm doing that later on. I want to be yep. flexible at first, and I understood that, yeah, uh, this money is not going into something that I own right now, but one, it's going into, it's putting money in my pocket mm-hmm. because, like, our Swaggy lives in a penthouse, so the lifestyle content, right? Mm-hmm. I-, I felt better being in a penthouse, like the concierge services, the valet services, the, the room service, like, things like that. Um, but at the same time, it was, like I said, it would take me eight years of paying this mm-hmm. to get to that just one down payment. I, mm-hmm. I, didn't, I don't feel comfortable liquidating that much money um, no matter what loan it is, liquidating that much money to buy a house at 25 years old, mm-hmm. right? Like it, down the line, sure, but at the time, no, it didn't make sense. So yep. that's why I want to say the numbers to show that there was different yes. options and just listen to the school saying, when you get out, get a job, but then go buy a house. Not buying a house is not right for everybody out the gate. When you're 35, 36, even 31, cool, but there's options. Yep. And I want to show that with, with Secure the Swag. Especially being that young as well, because for me, it's like I just turned 25 last week. 18th October was my birthday. So... I moved into the penthouse age 23. Yeah, I moved to the penthouse age 23. And I relate with that a lot because even Q Banks, this is something that stuck with me that Q Banks said, he said something, take this with a pinch of salt. I, I listened to a one hour video of what he was talking about. This is why I'm able to understand it. Please don't take this one statement and do something crazy. Do something crazy. Yeah, yeah no, no, no. <laughs> he said, your lot size will determine your lifestyle. Yeah. He said, what you want to pay for, mm-hmm. that your lot size will determine that. Obviously, that comes with correct risk management, mm-hmm. moving correctly, knowing how much capital you have at stake, etc. Don't be an idiot. Mm-hmm. But when he said that, something clicked, and I said, "Okay, all right, cool." So before I got the penthouse, I had like a crazy run, and I made forty k in twenty four hours on US thirty. I said, "Yeah, I'm stopping trading." Six months on a penthouse, down payment. Let's go. Mm-hmm drop that and then from there like you said i felt good i'm waking up every day i'm looking at the views in canary wharf in the in the whole of london there is not a penthouse like that penthouse motivation it's the best one i I went on viewings in every single building i said give me the best one there is no more buttons on the lift i live on the highest floor there is no more buttons like people saying which floor i'm saying yeah this floor what click there's no so i made sure to get the best of the best so i can feel good and like you said as well the life that comes with it um, you know, getting a taste of what's really out there. Mm-hmm. Like you have to understand, bro. Like people, people don't understand this. And I'm not even trying to come here and act too humble. Like I've never in my life had my forget had my own. I've never in my life had a bed. I've slept on the sofa. I've slept on the floor my entire life. My first bed was in a penthouse. It's big time. Mm-hmm. Like I was that broke. My family, they done everything for me. They tried their best. They're my mom, she, she's a housewife. She, you know, looks after that. My, my dad's getting older, et cetera, et cetera. But at that time, and I'm the kind of guy, I don't want a handout. Like, I'm not, I, I want to work for, you know, er- everything that's coming my way. So, like I said, I've got two extremes. And wherever extreme I go, I don't have a middle ground. I'm trying to find that as I'm getting older now. But for me, it's like, cool. F- I forget, forget a bit. I don't. There was no space in my house to put a bed. Like I said, there was loads of us living there at the time. My brothers and I married, etc. There's more space in the house. But at that time, I had, in my entire life, I had no bed. And there would be times where my uncle would come from abroad and 
I would have to give up where I'm sleeping and let him stay there and whatnot because he's trying to get his paperwork sorted in the country and have the right to work there. So it's like, I said to myself, okay, I'm already deep in this, sleeping like this, etc. I'm going to go crazy. I told my mum, we had like a little, not a lounge area, but like a, a mini living room upstairs. It was very small. I said to her, look, I've got this vision. I've got this process. I need you to trust this vision. Remove the sofa. I'm going to get a black wallpaper. I'm going to paint everything black. I'm going to build a little dojo. I'm going to go buy like a table, a monitor, laptop. I'm going to go crazy with revision, back testing, trading. And I bought myself a single Japanese foldable mattress. I put it on the floor every single day, my bro. I would not go downstairs. I was in solitary confinement. My mum would bring me food upstairs. <laughs> like my mum would bring me food upstairs every single day. And I would just eat charts, watch Swaggy, watch Q Banks, watch TJ Millionaire Mentor, watch personal development. That's all I would do every single day. I came off social media, by the way. My friends are thinking I'm dead. Like, like I came off social media. Nobody saw me for six months. Nobody saw me for six months. It was abnormal. But that's what made me, you know, like that's, that's where everything fully, fully, fully clicked in those six months of, you know, being alone, that, that six months of solitude, it really shaped the person that I am. So, yeah, going back to what I was saying, I went from one extreme to the other. So um, if you feel like you're in a position where you can do something, do it. And like Swaggy said, don't take opinions from passengers in your life. Mm. You're the one in the driver's seat. A lot of the times... People, you, you ever been driving a car and someone's trying to tell you how to drive? Bro, <laughs> you're not in the driver's seat. Absolutely. Relax, yeah. take it easy. So if you're in a position where you can do something that will make you feel better, that is wise. It's not stupid. It's not a stupid move. It's wise. It will make you feel better. And like you said, you made this sort of payment because you know in that year you're going to make eight figures, so on and so forth. Exactly. People will never understand that. So mm -hmm. I was in that position where I said to myself, and I made a TikTok video about it. I said, penthouse tour. Someone in the comment is saying, just want to ask, is that rented or bought? I said, rented. How much is the profit? Uh, how much is the rent? Or oh, around just under 40k for six months, like 80k a year. That's so silly. You could have bought a house, could have bought this. Could How do you know I haven't invested my money elsewhere, number one? And secondly, I made that six months rent in one day. With all due respect, I know you can't relate, but because you can't relate, please stop trying to brush off this negative energy onto myself. Mm -hmm. They will mm -hmm. never understand. Mm -hmm. Unless you're a trader who's done it and who's got the heart to deal with them sort of lot sizes and see those drawdowns because in that same video Q Banks also said if you can't handle the drawdown forget about handling the profits you know so yeah. that was ingrained in my mind so yeah. whenever I saw red at that level I, my heart wasn't palpitating like I wasn't I was normal mm -hmm. I got I'm so numb to drawdown now I'm so numb to it because I've seen the worst of it you know mm -hmm. so yeah man I relate with that heavy bro yeah to even piggyback off of that I got two separate points one about the whole because um, it's not wrong for people like for us or people out there in the world to like focus on people who are specialists in their craft, mm -hmm. period, point blank example. And I feel like a lot of people in their life have somebody that they designate like every single piece of advice to. And I think it's idiotic. And it's not, not wrong to tell your parents, or your cousin, your best friend, you can't tell me about this topic because you know nothing about it. Right. Like they will listen to money advice from their parents or, or listen to sporting advice, from somebody else. And it's like you can't do that. You know, like for me, prime example, like when I dropped out of college, like I, I told my mom, like. You're not like I, I was very upfront. I was very respectful. I was very upfront. I was like, I'm dropping out of college. This is not a, a decision where you're going to tell me I can't do it. This is a decision I'm making. And I'm telling you I'm making. and I'm telling you that you can't tell me get a college degree because it'll set you up for life. Where are we right now? We're in a broke apartment for 600 a month. And we're all basically, like you said, basically sharing a room. You can't tell me about money. You don't know how to make money. So you can tell me how to be a great parent. And when I have my first kid, I'm going to go to you f for to you know, figure out how to be a father and things of that nature. But like for money, let me figure out this path and do something different than what you and dad did. And she understood that when, when you break it down and be respectful. Mm. So I feel like out there, like, like you said, when it comes to TikTok, people will give their unsolicited advice. It's like us telling our videographers how to edit. Let them do their process. They know what they're doing. They, they know what they're doing. Let them do their process. So with me, I know what I'm doing with, with when it comes to my money. Stop telling me what you think I should do and you don't make money. That's the first thing. Second thing is, back to what you're saying about the, the penthouse, this goes uh, around uh, life as, as a whole. I say this on my channel, uh, not a lot, but like whenever the conversation comes up, is that like sometimes you have to put yourself in in – different situations just to, to to stay motivated right so like being in the penthouse with both of us like it motivated me every day yeah i could have been in a place for two three four or five k a month but it wouldn't have motivated me to c continue to grow um and and I, I say it a lot where it's like some people will stay in a situation because it makes them feel comfortable as opposed to 
you can't you can't like trade in like a quality of life like just paying a little bit more money for for convenience makes your life so much easier and simpler right like i remember i think i had a conversation with with connor i want to say last year where it was like i think um like his pay like i think like doubled or something like that in, in general and we're talking about like potentially him getting like a better place and like obviously like it's 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 kind of difficult to like you know go from like this place where you're paying this much money to this place where it's like it's way better but it's like this much money mm-hmm. you don't want to like increase your expenses because your because your paycheck going up but it's also like saying it to like I said or Connor's I do it with my own life where it's like I don't try to increase the expenses or but it's like sometimes you have to put yourself in that situation to see the other side of life because then you may get like you be put in better rooms prime example like you, you sit in first class you you meet different people who's in first class because you paid that extra money you never know who you're gonna meet. Um, Except for your on the way here, you bought just bought all the seats. Yeah, I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> you said like, oh, okay. I don't want to. Hey, hey. I said, nah, you just bought all of them. Uh, bro, yeah. <laughs> you, 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 never, you never know. And then. Uh, 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 I swear he bought the first class seats like his Harry Bowls. <laughs> <laughs> Mad. Yeah, I, I can't. I can't. I know. I just can't go. I just can't go back. And, and it's not. It's Like I said, it's never a flex. It's because I, I, I have a standard of life that I set for myself. So every mm. time I'm in, like I said, suite 1K, first class on Emirates, it's. When I'm on that seat, it's like, okay, I can never go back. So, like, it, it forces me to yes. try to make more money or, or do yeah. better. You yeah. know what I mean? Same, it's like, almost like an investment to yeah. you. So, say, that's for it. example, you know, a six-figure penthouse, but you know that six-figure penthouse, what it's going to do for you is going to make you seven yep. figures or vice versa. Half a million yep. penthouse is going to make you eight figures. You yeah. know? Yep. You're, you're treating in that way. And I think it's so powerful because even, like, something just like a, a view – you know, just having a nice view that you wake up to, or the weather. A lot of people talk about the weather all the time. Absolutely. You know, having a good tropical location yep. can make a massive difference, even in the smallest way. That's you why work I work every drive. Yeah, exactly. Definitely. That. Love Dub Thailand too. But yeah. just like you said, like it, it, it makes a big difference when you just raise it a little bit. Like mm-hmm. so, because you talked about TJ Millionaire Mentor. Guess where he lived? Big, big, like in that, he has a mansion for like his housing and stuff. But he lived one floor below me in Circa, LA. Like, that was his, like, office space, like, in Circa, which is the, the penthouse place. I would have never had the video with TJ if I didn't live there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Ruby Rose. Ruby Rose yeah. lived, like, one floor below me as well, the same floor as TJ, whereas like, I would have never met Ruby if, if I didn't live in the penthouse. I live in Puerto Rico right now. Who lives five doors down from me? Jake Paul. I would have never talked to Jake if he didn't, if he didn't live down the street from me. Like, and and you, you put yourself in these situations where you meet these people, have bigger and better conversations, and yeah. then now you are – you're meeting their friend who knows a friend who does the same thing you do. And now you're connected to like third, fourth party and you're going to make a whole bunch more money. And now your wife and their wife are connected because of just one connection, because you decided to live in a certain place Mm. or or pay a little bit more money for uh, an experience where it may be like, should I really do this now? But keep doing it over time. It it, it reveals itself why you did it the first time, because it it brings you different life connections that you would never got anywhere else. Absolutely. It's like risk taking, right? Yeah, anything you want to be able to achieve or have in life, you have to take risk. And it happens, like you said, when you didn't just go, oh, okay, I made this money now, let me just buy everything, let me just spend and increase. Because that's, as you say, that's, it's dangerous. Yep. Right? It's dangerous to do that too. So it has to be calculated, but it's understanding that, okay, I've started to make more money and I, I've not reached a ceiling, but I'm capped right now. Absolutely. The only way to, to go to the next level is to be able to invest and take the risk necessary yep. to be able to move forward. And again, it still has to be calculated. You still got to be careful. But at the end of the day, any risk, there's always going to be fair if, unless you take it. You Absolutely. just have to take it. And um, yeah, I'm actually in a similar position now where I'm, I'm, there's a place that's there. And I'm like, I don't know. You know I don't want to move. The, the stress of moving is the main one, but I I'm know. still like, do I want to increase it that much now? Should I wait a bit? But I know the same thing. The f- same thing's going through my head. Thanks to people like you guys sharing that sort of thing yeah. as well, though, and, and observing that as well. It's like, it needs to happen, yeah. right? There's no choice. I feel like what's important is um, diversifying your portfolio mm. and not even be- just becoming a trader, becoming someone who's interested in how to make money in business. Mm-hmm. So for me, myself personally, I, I'm a small fish when it comes to this. I've, I've only just started getting started this year with diversifying, et cetera, et cetera. But... Um, Obviously, uh, uh, I've invested in 20 properties with a rent-to-rent model. So I know if anything goes left, I'm guaranteed to get this income every single month. Yeah. Mm-hmm. People, people need to sleep. People need homes. Mm-hmm. So I've got like a long-term contract with these landlords, etc. So that's already number one. That's rem- removed trading stress from me. And obviously, with trading, you have your trading, your, your profits, you have your courses, etc. There's multiple ways to make money from that. Um, so I feel like, bro... Um, you have you have to take the risk with everything you do uh, because like let no risk no reward of course um but even me for example with my car i wanted to get a mercedes i'll be honest with you mm-hmm. then i said hold on 
can I afford right now to get something more than a Mercedes? And would it break the bank? So I got a McLaren. And people don't know, I actually didn't have a driver's license when I bought the McLaren. <laughs> it's my first car. It's my learner's car, actually, t- mm. in accordance to the UK. I, I had to dri- like you have to drive it with the L plate on it, <laughs> you know? Otherwise, if you don't have it, you'll get pulled over. Like mm. That's my first. People say, oh, why'd you get a McLaren? You're going to scratch it. I said, bro, if I'm in a Toyota Corolla, my mindset is I'm not going to drive this Toyota with the intention of wanting to scratch it. Mm-hmm. And for me, it's like I'm in this position where if it does get scratched, I can afford to fix it, mm-hmm. you know? Like, I've... I, c- I can do it. And at a point when I made that purchase, like I wasn't even intentionally trying to buy that car. There was two cars I wanted to view. There was a black one that was um, a four hour drive and there was this one, which was like a half a minute, dri- uh, a half an hour drive away. I went to go and view this one, which is the orange one. I looked at it. I said, bro, what's the point of going to see the, n- the other one? This has everything now I want. And the guy just named his price. And literally, as we're standing there, I transferred up the money as we're standing there. Mm-hmm. And for me, that was the moment. People say, oh, what was your aha moment in trading? In life, that was my aha moment because when I made that transfer, I swear to God, I didn't, I didn't realize what came out the bank because I, I built myself to that level where I can buy a supercar and not even realize the money that left my bank right now. And that's when I said, okay, cool, good. You've got this, you've got this, you've got this. You've diversified a little bit. Now it's time to go heavier on the investments and get yourself to the stage where Haters can never say anything about you. Not that that's what your purpose is, but people are always preying on your downfall. So I'm trying to make it like a bulletproof shield, like a hate-proof shield of how many guys you see come on, but they're not here in 10 years, or they're not here in five years and they fall off. I don't want to be that guy. And it's time to, at this age especially, you have to put your eggs in the right baskets to reap the rewards later on. And that's one thing I related with you, bro, when you said right now you're trying to build something to have a very, very juicy exit. And I'm in, I'm in the same page of my life right now I'm trying to build something substantial to the point where I can have that nice 50 million exit mm-hmm. or 100 million or 20 million or 10 million five mi- wha- wherever it may be you know so uh, I feel like people reach that level of wealth by doing something like that if it's not something that provides a solution to a problem mm-hmm. yeah no and I agree um, I think with me it's like my my life has changed in a sense like right now I'm 28 and when I was doing this, starting to trade at 19, it was because of my path, being homeless, great, cool, whatever. 22, 23 in the penthouse, I just wanted to make money just because I was, like, in love with money. And it, it, it didn't click until I was 25 or 26 to where I was, like, I'm, I'm not in love with money or, or how much money I make anymore. Now it's for my family. You know what I mean? So, like, every day, like, money I make now is cool and all. It's, it's a lot of money, but, like, it, I'm more happy that, like, when my daughter grows up, she don't got to worry about nothing. Like, every, I've, like obviously, I'm with my daughter when I'm in Puerto Rico every every day. But um, when I'm traveling, because I haven't been home in, like, the last three weeks, I'm FaceTiming her every single day. And that's what's pushed me forward to get these th- things and do these things. And it was in the, the psychology of money. It was, uh, I don't know, chapter chapter five or chapter three. Um, and I said this in the last podcast where there was a guy at a party, and he was with his wife, and he was very, very happy. And another guy walks in. Big party. Everybody there is successful. He walks in, like, maybe two hours after the party. He was like, yo, like, why weren't you at the office? Like, I just made this uh, trade. It was, like, an investment or something like that. And it, like, 10x, and I done made, like, your entire net worth in, like, I think a few hours. And the dude at the party was his wife. He was having a good time. He was like, yeah, but I have something that you don't have. And the dude said, what? And then he said, enough. Like, I'm, I'm good. I'm worth $100 million. I don't need to be at the office for, for an extra mil- For what? My, my life and my family is good, you know? So I think right now I'm at that point where it was, like, Three, four years ago, I don't know about that. Three, four years ago, I was like, I want to make as much money as I possibly can. And yeah, just money, 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 money. And I was like not spending as much time with my wife because I wanted to make more money. And and uh, um, I, I just, that's all I cared about. No time with friends. And now I'm at a point to where I want to make that same money. But if I don't, I'm not going to look at it as a failure. I'm cool. I want to spend more time with my, my daughter, more time with my wife, and then make that money as I can. But if I don't have t- like as much time as before to run the businesses, mm-hmm. that's why, like you asked earlier, how important is my team? It's very important because... Now I have the team to help me so I can spend more time with my daughter and, yeah. and, my, and my future son. It'll be here in a month and a half, basically. Mm-hmm. I've got a question for both of you guys. Mm-hmm. Two big daddies. <laughs> How would you feel like being a father has impacted your life in terms of business? Like you said, it, give you that, it gives you like a new sense of drive. Mm-hmm. But I just wanted to get your perspectives on it. I'm let you go first. Yeah, no, for me, it, it's changed my life. I, I didn't, but when my wife got pregnant in uh, 2021, I was actually like, 
not upset, but a little bit upset at first. I really thought my life would change. Like I really thought I had a really good groove on business and, and life and, and, and trading. And I felt like a, a kid would like kind of halt, uh, alter that a little bit. And it's been the greatest thing in the world. Like it, my life hasn't changed a, a bit. It's actually gotten a, a immensely better because of my daughter and how she smiles at me when she wakes up and, and how I feel. And my new, like I said, like I, she changed my life. My life before her was just about, like I said, I never was into cars. I only, I only had one car. I see people with 10, 15. I, I'm not into that. It's cool. I'm not into that. I'm not into uh, collecting like seven, eight watches. I got one watch, same watch I had in the last three years, stuff like that. But I was interested in money. Like I just loved making money, seeing the bank account grow up, just seeing, just seeing that. And when she was born, I stopped caring about the type of stuff. Like I, I want to make as much money as I can, but I stopped caring so much about that and, and more as uh, what I can do for her so that if she wants to be homeschooled, she can. If she wants to go to school, she can. If she doesn't want to, like, you know what I mean? Like, she, she has the option to do, to dictate her own life, yep. you know? And, and I feel like uh, when it comes to business, like, to answer your question, I'm, I'm more particular in the type of businesses I get into because I want her to be proud of me a decade from now. My dad does this. She can brag about it. Not yep. brag, but brag and be, yep. be proud of me. And, and that, that dictates a lot of what I do business-wise. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that because sometimes when you're broke and you're on a come up, you look at guys who have a silver spoon their whole life and like, oh yeah, daddy's money. So what if it's daddy's money? Oh, I don't care. Like for me, bro, I've got a neighbor, Chinese neighbor. I don't know if you saw the video. Mm -hmm. I posted it on my page. I've got a Chinese neighbor. This guy pulled up with the same McLaren as me, purple color. I look at him like, yo, bro, look, come, let's record a video. Just drop some words of, you know, motivation, etc. I don't know what this guy's about to say. I just know he's my neighbor. I've seen him a few times. He jumps in my car. We're recording a video. I'm like, yes, bro, give one piece of advice on how you were able to purchase such a nice car like this and how you were able to become successful. That's what you would think when you see someone with that car, right? The guy goes, I don't know. My parents gave me all this money. <laughs> it's, this on my pay. it's on my page. It's on my page. Real, real. He goes, I'm like, okay, so are you an investor? Do you I'm trying to dig for info because I'm thinking that can't be true. He goes, no, my parents, my parents buy it for me. He got a Lamborghini Aventador as well. <laughs> my parents gave me the money. I'm like, what do your parents do? Oh, they own a big company in China. I'm like, bro, fair play, bro. I'm not even going to hate because that's the father I'm trying to be. Yeah, mm. I, I, I would never hate in somebody in that position. I'm going to let you answer it. It's like, cause I would never hate in that. Because like people talk about trust fund babies and this and that. Like, wh what is the, the point of life? Is to have a kid and be like, well, I had it hard, so I 18. Like, it makes me so upset when I see Jackie Chan, Shaq, Ashton Kutcher, Mila Kunis say, yeah, when I die, I'm not giving my kids no money. They got to figure it out. What was the point of you living then? No. Like you, you had a kid and you got all this money, and then when you die, you're gonna just give it away to people. Like, but your kid gets nothing, mm -hmm. and they got it, it. Makes no sense. So I don't care about the whole trust fund baby. People look at Donald Trump, and like, obviously the junior, his dad gave us like loan of a million dollars. But it it takes somebody like Trump to take it to a whole nother level. Mm -hmm. yep. Like Trump is a far better businessman, more money, more successful yep. than his father ever was. Mm -hmm. And it's because like he like I said, he's not the guy who like oh my parents gave me this money, he just living life. Yep. No, he took it to new heights. Mm -hmm. I think that's what I. Whether my daughter wants to just relax or, or take it to new heights, um, she has the option. And that's a duty as a parent as well. You have to make sure you equip your children with knowledge to know how to manage money as absolutely. opposed to just leaving wealth behind for them to spunk all of it on nonsense. Yeah. You know? But yeah, sorry, bro. If you can no, answer. No, it's absolutely fine. No. Um, I was in a different position to Swaggy, to be fair. When my daughter came along, I was broke. I still had no money. And so I kind of used that motivation to just work even harder. So I've always ha had a good work ethic, but I just worked much smarter, much harder, put myself into much better um, opportunities that would lead to making money, to grow, focusing on the skill set. It helped with my trading in one degree, not in terms of like she was born and suddenly I was like, oh my goodness, I need to be disciplined, I need to make this work. It came to a point where I was like that much of gambling in trading that I gambled the rent money. But then at this, it was fine to do that and blow like money I couldn't afford to lose when it was just me, right? It was bad to do it when it was me and my wife. Tough. But at least she works, right? Tough. But then when you got a kid, it's a whole different story. Now, like the mindset, hopefully mm. for the right people, would be like, nah, yep. you got to catch yourself here because now you're going too far. It's beyond you. Yeah. So then I had that accountability. So that helped a lot. And then just for me, I lost my dad when I was five. So then right there, now right. I'm in a bit of a hard position now because I'm doing all this time. Like it looks cool. Everyone's like, oh, you work so hard and you do all these podcasts and stuff. And it looks cool. And it is. It's really great opportunity. The networking, the the value that's being provided, the feedback. It's amazing. And my daughter plays into it. Like I've taken her to the studio before and she'll sit there with the headphones, she'll talk and stuff. And, and it's really cool. But then it's the time, like you said, you know, it's, it's like choosing like, okay, what matters more? The subscribers, the money, the, 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 the growth and success 
or the time that you get with your kids. So okay. me, obviously, I'm in this like reflective mode right now. I had a podcast the other day with someone who kind of had a very similar life story to me. And we were kind of, it, was, it wasn't even a podcast in the end. It was like a therapy session. Yeah. And then we had this like just reflective thing of like, I need to just, re- I need to evaluate where I'm at right now and just allocate time and, and uh, energy in, in different ways. You know, be more efficient, be more smart and uh, re- restructure the priorities, I think, you know. But the kids themselves, I've had my second one come along now. And uh, it was a little difficult like the, the transition period, then having two kids. Um, but it's, it's kind of similar to what we talked about earlier, the team. It's all about your partner, you know? I wouldn't be able to do any of this. This wouldn't be here if I didn't have the right partner to Absolutely. make it happen. Amazing. You know? yep. And um, she's behind the scenes, like she's not known. And, and she watches, but she watches every podcast. She watches every podcast. She gives me feedback. She's the one who came up with the name, Words of Wisdom. Shout out to our wives, man. Yeah, they they, they do a lot behind the scenes that they don't get credit for sometimes. Like, <laughs> shout that's out to that's them, what you man. need. That's what you need in a partner, for real, man. Oh, well, how's it been for you though? Because I know you recently got married, not well, not recently, yeah, but like yeah, a good yeah, few yeah. months ago, um, and no doubt that the next transition will be eventually yeah. to have children and stuff. So Alhamdulillah, yeah. So for me, I would say I always wanted to be a dad. Mm-hmm. I feel like, I, and I always wanted to have a daughter first. I mm-hmm. don't know why. Yeah, I, can't, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I want to be a dad, bro. I'll be honest. With I bet your parents are doing this question. When? when yeah, yeah, when yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, the world, yeah, yeah. I want, I want to be a dad because every dad I speak to that is in a business what, uh, space. They always say to me, like, you unlock a new sense of purpose and it just makes you a better man, yes. you know? So, yeah. Uh, can explain it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Hopefully, hopefully. You never know. But, yeah, you might see Daddy Yarimi soon. I'm going to tell you, the minute the podcast ends, I'm going to FaceTime my daughter, like, just to see how she's doing. Like, the minute the cameras go off, you know what I mean? She's got a beautiful smile, it's, bro, it's, man. I appreciate yeah, it, bro. Man. It's, just, it's just, like, the dad life is just amazing thing. So. That's it, man. 100%. Yeah. And we're, go- we're coming towards the end now. And so I'm just going to ask you both one question. Uh, or two questions, to be fair, but one being, uh, which is something that I've realized over this year, which is diversification. How powerful was it in your, whether it's your trading journey or just generally in life, especially when you're leveling up, you know, through the process as well, being able to make higher purchases or investments, wherever it may be. How important was diversification to you, uh, whether it's investments or income sources, wherever it may be? How important was it to you to be able to make those uh, decisions and the peace of mind that it can bring? I think uh, when you diversify, like I said, it, it brings you one thing, which is peace of mind. Because uh, if you just rely on one thing, that one thing can go up and down no matter what, whether it's just business or just trading. I've seen, like, I've had obviously months where, you know, trading-wise, you can make 10K in a month in my earlier days, you know what I mean? And then I'm thinking I'm good for life. And then, like, the next month you, you lose 15K and now you don't set yourself back 5K. Or business, you think your business is the next, you know, Apple is the greatest thing in the world. And then you launch something and it's flat, you know? Mm. Um, so I, I think when, when you, I think you should focus on, on one thing first, mm-hmm. but I think once that one thing seems to be automated and you had a good grasp on it, then you can do other things. So with me, like I was, obviously I was babysitting from ages mm. 19 to 23 and that babysitting money was used for trading. So mm-hmm. I would say trading was, was the, the first focus. Um, then the, 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 the course that I had, the business that I had, right? Like right after that, um, then I lost another business right after that. So I had three different, uh, two different businesses and then trading income where it was like, even if my trading is bad, my two businesses aren't bad. If my two businesses aren't bad, trading isn't bad. And, and it allows you to have different streams where it hits at different times of the month. You use this stream for this, this mm-hmm. stream for this, this stream for that. And I think that um, if you ever rely on just one thing, it, it gets tricky at times, especially if you're trying to build, build, build an empire. Mm-hmm. So prime example right now, it may seem like a lot, but right now I have five businesses, right? And those five are all... They're in different. They're in a, a similar industry, but they all do different things mm-hmm. uh, per se, right? Um, and let's say, like prime example, like one may be like a, a educational company, one may be a streaming site, one may be a prop firm, one may be like an art company, one may be like this is all f- the four that I, I I run right now. One is an, an event event conference type of thing. Like those are the five companies that I that I run right now, um, and they're all in the same finance industry, but they do different things. And then mm-hmm. it's trading. And so to answer your question. Like, no matter what, there's income coming from some place, no matter what. So I always have a peace of mind. Mm-hmm. When I'm trading, I don't got to worry about blowing an account or, or doing too much. Peace of mind when I'm walking through my day where if I decide, I haven't traded in the last three weeks. I've been traveling, mm-hmm. right? I was talking to Umar and Roy today about, hey, do you guys trade when you travel? No, absolutely not, because I can't get a grasp on the time zones, things of that nature. And I've been, the last, like I told you, the last 20 days, I went to Miami, New York, Los Angeles, Cabo, Kansas City, uh, Puerto Rico, uh, Washington, and then uh, Dubai. So eight places in, in the last 20 days. So I haven't traded in the last 20 days. But before that, like trading, but the peace of mind it brings during these last 20 days where I'm not trading, but money's still coming in. Mm-hmm. It's priceless. Definitely. Definitely. How about for yourself? Obviously, as you said, you're starting to diversify a lot more now, but yeah. how's that been for you? Yeah, for sure. For me, it's been 
similar to what Swaggy said, just not on the same scale on my small fish, bro. <laughs> Come on, man. Um, but yeah, it's been it's been very very similar. Um, it's just nice to know that you've got money coming in mm-hmm. elsewhere without having to do anything. To be mm-hmm. honest with you, and it's like what 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 I heard from you when you said Usain Bolt said he trained his entire life nine seconds to run nine seconds. Mm. <laughs> so it's like people will look at it getting mad that we make money this quick or we make money uh, with ease. But bro, it took those sleepless nights. It took those stressful moments with the bailiffs are at your house and you can't pay your debts and you can't pay your rent. And you know, it took all of that to now be in a position where making money hands off is so fruitful, you know, mm-hmm. um, to, because you made the right decisions of diversifying your income, not being a stupid guy, just blowing the bag and, you're now broke, you know, so yeah, um, it's, it's very nice. It gives you the peace of mind to know that you're able to support your family on command, mm-hmm. whatever the situation may be. And it's because of your decision making. That's it. Yeah. And, and, and before you get to the last question, um, it, it, it makes sense because you have to get it from different industries. So we go to, 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 to fighting. Like, obviously, mm-hmm. you know, Conor McGregor was a UFC fighter, made a lot of money that way. Mm-hmm. Um, same industry, but he, in terms of fighting, his biggest check came from fighting Floyd Mayweather. Yeah. But in terms of all the money he's made in totality, his biggest money came from Proper 12, like mm-hmm. his whiskey company. That, that's three different mm-hmm. – I'm sure he has more that he hasn't even, like, exactly. talked about yet. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, but that's three different things right there alone where it's like if he's not in the UFC and he's not fighting Floyd, Proper 12 is, is, is like, year-round. It's constantly going, constantly going. So, he, he obviously, he wants to get back into the ring. He doesn't have to if he, if he wants to. He's set yeah. for life. You know, so so I feel like the more you diversify, you never know when your next check is going to come. Like I say this all the time, Rihanna became a billionaire from from uh, uh, a savage, not from music. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like where she started from, mm-hmm. right? And same with Conor. Obviously, money came from a lot of most of his money came from proper 12, not UFC fights. Mm-hmm. And you have to diversify, even though your first love may be this. Something you may find two years later may be where, where you really hit your peak at. Yeah. And it's only going to happen if you look for uh, ways to diversify. Definitely. No, I love that. I love that. And the final question then was actually one I wanted to come back to from yourself earlier. And then there will be one for yourself as well. But like you said that, you know, in terms of YouTube, you haven't really gone into that scene. And obviously looking at someone like Swaggy and, and having that inspiration there. And we talked about earlier people just copying, down yeah. outright copying. Yeah. Why haven't you gone into sort of the YouTube or, or again, try to copy, for example? But Why have you chosen not to do that? No, no, to be honest, I, I did copy. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, but I, I say I, I like I say this is an inspiration to me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Some men they'll copy, but they'll never they won't they won't say, "Hey, I take inspiration." Mm-hmm. From and this. before you continue, that that's t- different than copying and saying I did it myself. For example, because even when I started, if you look at my my first day in life video, the end of it said. Thank you to Ricky Gutierrez for inspiring this video because mm. he did the first day in life that I saw. I made mine based off his. Mm. So I wanted the credit. That's all I ever wanted from anybody who yep. copied. Mm-hmm. And there's people out there who said, oh, I never got that. And they know they did. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's like, so, uh, yeah, like even when I was watching your videos and you had the hustle, grind, execution posters, bro, I bought the same posters. Like the billionaire. 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 Mm-hmm. I, I went on Photoshop. I did graphic design on the side. I went on Photoshop and made my own version of it, printed it out, put it on my wall. So, yeah, I definitely... Um, took inspiration from that but the reason i'll be honest with you the reason why and this is where i feel like we can have conversations off camera um on because it's very long to have on on Mm -hmm. on here i feel like i need some advice with that regard in terms of like a team what to look for the kind of logistics that Mm -hmm. things that take place behind the scenes on how to run a successful youtube channel Mm -hmm. in 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 that sector you know so for me i feel like i've I've got a lot of growth to do and they say two types of people will never learn Mm -hmm. the shy and the arrogant you can't be shy and you can't be arrogant thinking you know it all. You've got to put your hand up, ask questions to people that have done and are doing what you want to do. So that's the honest truth, man. I feel like I've never really had a, because I don't really have a, I have a, I outsource. Mm-hmm. If I need like a poster, I've got a graphic designer, I outsource. If I need a cameraman, I've got a gra- cameraman, I outsource. If I need, I outsource things, but I don't have anything in-house. And I feel like, because I only, I've only got two people that work for uh, Urim University and they're mainly just like admins. So everything else I pretty much do. Mm. So I feel like I'm at a point now where I've got to just, it's yeah. Branch, yeah. yeah. We'll yes, talk so. off camera about that because I got a lot. Because everybody with me is in-house. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I got like 30 of them yep. in-house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll talk about that off camera for sure. Yeah. But yeah, to answer your question, uh, you said um, YouTube, why haven't I? Uh, that's, that's mainly why. No, uh, yeah, it makes sense. mainly why, yeah. yeah I just feel like wise. I've got a lot more learning to do mm-hmm. once I've, once I'm, Furthermore, let me give you your flowers very quickly. You, <laughs> need, you need to sit me down and tell me how to do this YouTube. <laughs> My man's got 45 podcasts in the bag. Crazy. <laughs> Crazy. 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 I've never well seen well. someone document a 365 journey every Crazy. single day. Working. Day one, 
day two, day I three. I see it, bro. Some days I wake up, it's like day 272. I'm like, yeah. bro, like, how are you this consistent? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, so we're going to anyway, as, as we said, you, know, you have to just be obsessed with it and then just push forward. Yeah. And the, the beauty of the podcast, it emulates all of it. You know, the hard work here or the mindset here, it just emulates across the board. And that's the whole point of the pod is to really just show that, look, in terms of the growth and the success, there's so many relatable and transferable habits that people find. So just if you're struggling, just start adopting them, Absolutely. you know, yep. just start adopting them. But to, to wrap up then, I know you mentioned earlier, secure the bag and new season's coming soon. Swag. So Yeah. Secure the swag. Yeah, night, was that, night and day. What's that? We're going to switch that out. Bang so secure it. the swag. Yeah. It's coming soon, you said. Yeah, it, uh, it'll be uh, out in a few weeks. I got a, uh, a video uh, about uh, a new uh, nonprofit I'm starting mm-hmm. that we talked about in our first podcast. Yes. That's actually starting uh, in like a week or two. Incredible. So it kind of work, uh, works itself out. Um, we got that video coming out next. And then uh, I think Secure the Swag is like, it's like right after that. So um, yeah, Secure the Swag season four. I haven't done it all in 2023. So it's the first, first one since before Laura was born. So I think my last episode was last July. So we got a lot to talk about in those, in those 14, 15 months. So definitely. yeah, it, it'll kind of gonna make a banger of, of an episode. You I have no doubt it. about it. Yeah, yeah. See it. Definitely. Well, both of you, thank you so much for coming. It was such a wholesome, you know, experience and conversation. Like I said, we don't see this in the industry and hopefully it inspires yep. others to do the same. Most definitely, That's the aim. And, um, yeah, well, thank you for. I know you've already come all the way from the states, so we'll let you hopefully rest up when yeah, you get home. Knock out, bro. That's really, and uh, you mean me as well as always. Thank you for having me, bro. Appreciate yeah, it, man. Do this again. It's the goat. Thank and you, everyone you. as well. My guy. Just wanted to say, Cristiano Ronaldo, some people's goats. Lionel Messi, some people's goats. <laughs> this is my goat right here, bro. Appreciate you, my guy. <laughs> my guy, man. Thank you, everyone. Hundred thousand subscribers smashed. Thanks to all of you and our incredible guests. A million is up next. Yes, sir. Let's go. Let's go.